Hi, Phil Needham with Needham Ag Technologies and we're standing in a wheat no-till fertility trial. Each individual wheat plot was planted this direction. It's no-tilled into corn stalks and the angle of the corn rows is that direction. So we planted at about a 25 degree angle perhaps, a little bit more than that, to the corn rows. And what we're starting to see now is some darker green strips and when you look at these plants closer they're a leaf stage further ahead than some of the yellower strips so what's the difference so basically some of these treatments the darker green ones had in row fertility applied the yellower ones that i think you can see from that angle had surface applied fertility and often these treatments are side by side and the same amount of fertilizer applied in the row is drastically greener and healthier compared to the one alongside it that's yellow that had the same amount of fertilizer surface applied. So what's going on here? So for many years, you know, many regions, western Kansas or most of Kansas actually, most of the northern plains, uh, most of the western provinces of Canada, you know, those areas have been using in-row fertility, especially phosphorus with the seed for 30 or 40 years, maybe more. And you know, they're doing it primarily because they're in no-till conditions, the soils are cooler. Some of them guys are in low phosphorus level soils. So when you ban phosphorus, you've got a higher standard of efficiency when you place it in the row with the seed. So comparing those areas to here, We've got a massive amount of residue on top of the soil surface. This is corn that was no-tilled into soybeans, double crop soybeans, in fact, that was after wheat. So all of those crops have been no-tilled. So we've got a massive amount of, of residue on top of the ground that tends to cool the soils in the fall compared to conventional tillage and significantly cools the soils in the spring, again, to, compared to, to conventional tillage. We often see eight Fahrenheit, sometimes greater soil temperature differences between no-till with heavy residue and work ground. And I think those cooler soils in the fall and then the spring have a significant negative impact on phosphorus uptake. So in a lot of these no-till fields, we see drastic increases in plant health and color as a result of the in-row fertility compared to surface broadcast. So this field's had some rains recently to move the nitrogen and the, and the sulfur component in some of the fertilizers like MESZ. This treatment right here that's green is MESZ at 100 pounds in the row. This treatment that's yellower is 100 pound of MESZ surface broadcast, for example. So side by side, we have similar treatments. The only difference is the placement of the fertilizer the green ones in the row, the yellow ones surface applied, and despite a rain, it's not moved, at least the phosphorus, it's not moved the phosphorus far into the soil, and it won't. Phosphorus generally doesn't move very far compared to nitrogen or sulfur that can be quite mobile with adequate rainfall. So, little background here, we've got very high soil test P levels. You know, some would say, well, the soil test P levels in this are drastically low, and you're seeing significant greening as a result, but no, this field's got good soil test P levels. So even in worked fields, we sometimes see yield responses to phosphorus, but those are generally uh, lower soil test P levels, later planting conditions, but it's generally the no-till conditions where we see the biggest response to seed place phosphorus. And seed place phosphorus could be dry or liquid, we prefer dry just because it's cheaper per, per pound of P2O5. Most people that have a box drill can just blend, map, or DAP, or, or MESZ, look at your soil test and decide if you want the sulfur and, and zinc with MESZ. If you don't, just map or DAP would be cheaper and very similar from a point of view of response. So you can blend those products with seed and just drill them into the, into the field like you would just seed. You just don't need to leave them mixed for long periods of time. And if you get a big rain, you need to put a tarp over the drill or pull the drill inside. Most people that are planting larger amounts of acres would have an air seeder with an air cart. The air cart would have at least two compartments. One would have seed. The other one would contain FOSS in the form of MAP or DAP or MESZ. That would allow you to, to do some rate specific work in the field maybe 
or change the rate of FOSS in different fields. You know, it just it allows you to make some rate changes relative to the seeding rate itself. So from a point of view of research, in most of our trials over many years, we generally see a minimum of five bushel per acre of yield response with seed place FOSS compared to broadcast FOSS at the same rates. Sometimes we see eight bushels per acre of a response, but five to eight bushels per acre response broadcast to banded, same product, just a different placement, is pretty much the range of what we see. If you look at other bodies of data from other states, you'll see a lot of five to 10 bushel per acre responses, depending on many conditions. Planting date, uh, if, it's, if it's planted later, you generally see a better response to in-row FOSS. If the soil tests are lower, sometimes you see a better response to FOSS. But overall, five to eight or five to 10 bushels per acre is generally the range, okay? So if you're not putting phosphorus in the row with the wheat, I'd strongly encourage you to do so, especially in these no-till systems because we see good uh, yield advantages from doing so. So thanks for watching and get some FOSS on your wheat in the row.